In the English county of Wiltshire lies the small village of Avebury. Encircling the settlement are a series of ancient banks and ditches, almost a mile in circumference. In the village itself is Europe's largest group of stone circles dating from between 4000 and 2400 BC. The mere sight of the stoic monuments evokes a sense of ancient mystery. There are whispers among Avebury's residents that the ancient gods to which the stones were built to worship still lurk here. In the 14th century, likely acting under the authority of the church, villagers at Avebury began toppling the stones and burying them in deep pits. In 1938, the buried monoliths were rediscovered. Beneath a particular rock, several coins, a sundry, and other items were discovered. It wasn't difficult to determine who the items belonged to, because his skull was staring back out of the pit, grinning at the archaeologists. Perhaps the ancient spirits didn't approve of their stones being removed. In the 18th and 19th centuries, many of the stones were broken up and used in construction of various new buildings. A cobbler who had been working on one of the stones on a Sunday stepped away to rest when the monolith collapsed onto the position he had been standing a moment earlier. Today, the remaining stones have been returned to their original positions and are generally left untouched. Despite this, Residents report strange ghostly figures moving among the stones at night, and of hearing singing where no humans are present. For thousands of years, standing unflinching as seasons, customs, and the very earth they stand upon shift and change, Neolithic sites have come to be associated with a wide variety of mysterious legends aside from hauntings. The Nine Stones, or Devil Stones in Dorset, is a relatively small stone circle that has collected a number of these superstitions over the years. It has been rumoured that the stones are children who have been turned to rock by some almighty force after playing a forbidden game of knuckle bones on a Sunday. A newspaper story from 1985 refers to a breakdown van towing a car past the nine stones when suddenly the engine cut out followed by the lights of both vehicles abruptly turning off. Perhaps the legend most associated with the nine stones is that they cannot be counted. The legend of uncountable standing stones is not exclusive to this site, but rather recurs throughout England. It is quite easy to view similarities between uncountable stones and other number and counting related folklore tales. As humans, we can't help but feel a spiritual, even metaphysical connection to these places, even if words cannot explain why. Mathematics, perhaps fundamentally, are still significant in our urban legends today be it the time of day when a supernatural event is said to occur, the distance which must be travelled down a certain road to enter another realm, or the number of times a particular action must be completed for an otherworldly entity to appear, such as Bloody Mary. The White Horse in Uffington is the oldest chalk drawing in Great Britain and is roughly 3,000 years old. Among a rich tapestry of other legends, the story goes that if you step into the eye of the horse, close your eyes, and turn three times on the spot, any wish you make will be granted. I sometimes consider how the more recent superstitions about these ancient sites are probably inherently linked to their original purpose. Certain numbers and circles were likely held as sacred or at least socially significant in the building of these structures. And despite not having a clear understanding of the exact use of them, these new legends pick up on these central aspects of the sites. This is the ruinous shell of the 12th century Knowlton Church in Dorset. An ancient structure in its own right, it lies at the centre of a 4,000 year old pagan circle. Standing stones from the site were broken up and used in the construction of the church, 
The site stands as one of many illustrations of Christianity's sweep across Europe, very literally converting locals to a new religion. The village of Knowlton was once a thriving church-going community, but the population was decimated by the plague in the 15th century. Those who did survive the clutches of the Black Death fled for greener pastures. The church continued to attract the rural community until the 18th century, when its roof collapsed, and shortly thereafter, it closed its doors for the last time. Given Knowlton's age, it is fitting that there are an almost innumerable number of different apparitions and supernatural phenomena reported here. A phantom horse and rider are said to gallop across the site in the dead of night. They then proceed to pass straight through the church as though it wasn't there at all. A ghostly face has also been witnessed peering from the top window of the tower. The identity of the spectre is not known. Then there are the reports of a shadowy weeping woman, who some describe as a nun, that has been seen kneeling outside the church, although what sin or transgression she is begging forgiveness of is a mystery to this day. This 4,700 year old Neolithic ring, surrounding a small druidic men here, is situated just outside the urban sprawl of Belfast City in Northern Ireland. Paranormal encounters have been reported here for many years, including whispered voices, apparitions, and strange floating lights. However, the area is most closely associated with another bizarre phenomenon. It is best described in a first-hand account by Fark Tenebro in a 2011 WordPress article. I was in Northern Ireland at age 10 with my older brother and younger sister, who were two years older and younger respectively of me. One day our mum took us with our aunt to the Giant's Ring, which is a Neolithic gravesite not far from Belfast. Imagine a donut lying flat with a piece of cloth over it, about as big as three football pitches. That's what it was like. In the middle of the ring was a men here, or dolmen. It was a beautiful sunny winter day when we were there, and my mum and aunt stayed near the car as we ran around. We walked up to the top of the circular hill, and could see the men here in the middle, and the other side of the ring beyond it. So we walked into the middle. As we were looking at the men here, it suddenly became very cold and foggy, and soon you could not see the hill that surrounded us. My sister started getting upset, so we decided to walk back to the car. Well, we walked into the mist in the right direction, but ended up coming back to the men here. We tried another two times to leave, but kept getting lost in this thick ass mist and coming back to the men here. We were all getting a bit teary, so my brother, who would later join the army, came up with an idea. He'd run out into the mist and keep our voices behind him. When he got to the hill, he'd call and my sister would run to him with my voice behind her. He runs into the mist, we're all crying and screaming, but soon enough, he calls that he's found the hill. My sister runs off towards him, and I'm left alone next to this man here. I've never been so afraid in all my life. When they called, I ran like the very hounds of hell were behind me. I find them, and sobbing, we ran to the top of the hill to leave the ring. And as we got to the top, the mist lifted, and again you could see across it, the men here in the middle and the far side of the ring beyond. No mist whatsoever. We ran to mum, who was confused at first, because according to her, it had never changed from sunny. She'd seen no change in the weather. Could these inconceivably ancient Neolithic sites really have some literal connection to the past? A link beyond the comprehension of our senses? It's an interesting thought that these places are some of the only human-made structures of which we do not know the purpose. Perhaps the eerie, ethereal sensation some people describe when visiting these areas is our being's humbling acceptance that we exist in the mere blink of an eye. The flick of eternity's wrist, our consciousness snuffed from all that is known with a single tick of nature's clock. There will come a day when all our achievements, artwork, building, and stories will be remembered for the last time. It's tragic, but strangely comforting. Try everything you've ever dreamed of. You have nothing to lose, because we'll all lose everything. But maybe if these stones and circles can remain, unflinching in the face of millennia of violent natural forces, then so too can we. With no intention of ending this video on a morbid note, we'll find out soon enough. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.